Power-ups are a staple in most games. It's kind of hard to think of an example of a game that doesn't have them, right? And they come in a couple different forms, but in this example, I want to show how you can walk into an item and then it does some effect to your character that powers you up or restores health or something like that. And we're going to be doing this all with scriptable objects, so the code's going to be nice and clean and decoupled. So let's just jump into it. I have a 2D Unity project here, and I have been making a couple videos on how to use scriptable objects in interesting ways, so check those out. But you don't really need to. You can definitely follow along without knowing anything about it. Anyway, so here we are. In my game, I have this player that can walk around. I have a health bar that shows I'm currently damaged. And now we want to add some power-ups that we can walk into and pick up. And again, we're going to be doing this with scriptable objects. And that means down in our assets folder, I'm going to be able to right-click and go to Create and make a bunch of power-ups, whatever we want, down here. And I'm gonna talk more about it as we go along, but this is what's gonna be called the delegate object because our scriptable object's gonna be responsible for actually applying you know, the individual power-ups to our players. And that's gonna be really cool. So let's go ahead and create our power-up scriptable object. And so I'm gonna create a new C-sharp script and I'm gonna call this power-up effect. And we'll open this up. Okay, so we have our power up effect script here, and just like all Unity scripts, we are defaulted to inheriting from this mono behavior, and we don't want to be doing that. We actually want to inherit from scriptable object, uh, but we can actually get rid of update and start because this is not going to be a fleshed out script. This is going to be our abstract script that we build power ups out of. So the first thing we want to do is in between public and class here, we want to make this abstract. And this abstract keyword means that we can never actually initialize this power up effect class. Like you can't make an instance of power up effect. But what we can do is inherit from this power up effect. So you can make something like a health buff effect or something like that that inherits from this. And then that health buff can be instantiated. So I'll show you how that works in a second. But the only thing we want to have in this abstract class is a single method. So we could say public abstract void apply and we'll pass in a game object. And we can call this something like target, right? Because this is gonna be the target of the power up. It's probably going to be the player. In our example, it definitely will be, but maybe you're also powering up enemies or some other game object in your scene, who knows? Cool, so we have an abstract class with an abstract method. And this is basically just going to be a template of what we want our scriptable objects to be. So let's go ahead and implement our first one. So we'll go back to the editor and I'm gonna make another quick C Sharp script. And I'm gonna call this health buff. And we'll open this up. So we have this health buff script here. And now we actually want to inherit not from mono behavior, but from our power up effect. We can get rid of start and update. And you'll see it's complaining. It says we're not implementing our abstract member apply. So we actually have to make that apply method. So if you wanted to implement this, what we need is to make an apply method that takes a game object argument. So we can say public override because we want to override this method from our parent class here of power up effect. We have no return type, so it's void and it's called apply. It takes a game object target and we can get rid of this exception that gets defaulted. So what do we actually want to store on our health buff? Well, we probably want to configure how much health we want to restore, right? Or maybe even how much health you want to lose if you pass in a negative value. So what we can do is say public float amount and then we have this game object target, right? And the target is whoever the buff is being applied to. So in this case, it's going to be my player. And my player has a health script on it with a health and max health value. So what we want to do is access this health script and change the health value. So what we can say is target dot get component. The component we're looking for is health. And then we just want to access the health variable. In my case, I'm using float variables, which I just talked about in my last video. So we want to get the value of that float variable, and then we want to plus equals the amount that's being stored on this health buff. And that's it. That's all the code we're going to write. And just like that, we have our first buff created in our game in just like five lines of code. Really, really easy stuff. The last thing we want to do is because this is going to be a scriptable object, we want to be able to make this in our asset menu. So above our health buff class here, what we want to say is in square brackets, create asset menu. And then this is optional, but if you want to have it kind of configured nicely, what you can do is open parentheses and say menu name, which is just a parameter for this create asset menu. And in here, what we can do in string quotations, we can say power ups slash health buff. Just like that, because we're going to be making a couple of types of power ups, right? So this is just going to organize them nicely. And so with that done, we can actually now go back to our Unity editor 
right click on our assets folder, go up to create, and you'll notice at the top here it says power ups and we can actually expand this and you'll see health buff. And so that's what we actually configured in that string quotation for the menu name. We have now a little folder here and we can put all of our different power ups and everything's just kind of organized nicely. But let's actually select this health buff and I'm gonna call this minor health buff. And I'm gonna right click on assets and make another one of these. I'm gonna call this major health buff. So clicking on our minor health buff, or it doesn't really matter which one, you'll see the only thing we can configure in the inspector is the amount. So let's go ahead and do a quick example. For the minor health buff, I'll set the value to 25. And for the major health buff, I'll set the value to 50. So we now have this scriptable object power up that we can make in our asset menu and configure in our inspector, which is great. And the scriptable object contains all the logic for applying the power up, right? And this is really important. What we're missing now is an actual game object in our scene somewhere for our player to collide with and then apply that power up. But now we have separation of concerns. We can now make a game object that has a collider on it. And this game object can just worry about colliding with a player or you know whatever game objects you wanna apply power ups to. And then the scriptable object is entirely responsible for applying these buffs and debuffs to things. Right, you don't have to really mix your systems up too much here. Everything's pretty separated nicely. And so this is a really good way of going about it. But let's go ahead and actually make that game object that collides with our player and get this thing working. So let's go use a square. I'm going to right click on our hierarchy and go to 2D object, sprites. And I'm just going to click square. Maybe I'll make it red or something. And we'll call this health power up. I'm gonna add a box collider 2D, and I'm just gonna set is trigger set to true. And then I'm gonna make one quick script and call this power up. And we'll make sure we attach this power up script onto it. And let's open that up. So we can get rid of start and update again in this power up script. We don't need it. And this time we actually do want to inherit from mono behavior because we need this to actually be a script we attach to our game object. Now, we don't know what kind of power up we're putting into this, right? We just know that we want to collide with the player. So what we can say in here is we could say public power up effect. And we'll call the variable power up effect. So we're going to be passing in a power up effect. We know that. And then we just want to apply it to whatever we're colliding with. So we need to check for collision. And so we'll do that like we always do. We say void on trigger enter 2D. We can destroy our power up as soon as we collide with it, so it goes away. So we can say destroy game object. And then right after we destroy our power up, what we want to do is apply our power up effect. So we can say power up effect dot apply. And we want to apply it to the collision dot game object. Because this is a collider 2D, this collision object, but our apply function actually takes in a game object. So we actually want to reference the game object here. And that's it. This is <laughs> this is all you need to do, right? All the script's doing is saying, hey, did we collide with something? Oh, we did? Well, let's destroy the game object and apply the power up effect. And maybe you only want this to apply to player objects. So you could do a check here for if it's a player or an enemy type. You know what I mean? Like you could put this check here in an if block and then apply the power up because um, maybe you don't want anything colliding with it. But in our case, I don't really care. This is where the check would go though. So going back to the editor, we now have our health power up game object with a power up script. And in that script, we have a power up effect variable we can pass a scriptable object into. So let's go ahead and put in our minor health buff. We expect this to restore 25 health. If I play the game, you'll see if I walk into this thing, we expect it to destroy and my health should go up. And that's exactly what happens. I could duplicate this health power up object and move it over. And for this duplicated value over here, let's pass in our major health debuff. And I'll make this one like yellow or something so you know they're different. And so now I have pretty low health. This red one should only restore a little bit of health. So it barely got me halfway. And then we expect this yellow one to heal much more health. And it does, it almost fills my health bar up. So just like that, we have two different power ups we were able to make in the inspector in a flash, right? And so now let's just say we want to add one more type of health buff into the game, or in this case, a debuff. So we could say minor health debuff. And let's actually pass in a value of like negative 25. On this red one, without changing anything, I could just click and drag our minor health debuff into the slot instead. And now when we play the game, we now expect my player to lose health, and we do. Do you see how fast that was to build things out? And we built the system out in a way that we don't really have to worry about things breaking or being too dependent on each other, which is really, really great.
Okay, so I think I illustrated the point with these health buffs, but let's actually make another type of power up. How would we do that? So we can actually make a new script, and I'm gonna call this speed buff. And we'll open this up. And just like before, we can remove the guts of the default script. Instead of mono behavior, we wanna inherit from power up effect, which is a scriptable object abstract class. We can add our create asset menu tag at the top, and in here we can say menu name, and again do power ups. And this time we'll do a speed buff. We can make another public float amount, because for the speed buff what we wanna do is impact how fast our player is moving. And then just like our health buff, the only thing we wanna do is override our apply method and implement that. So we can And then in my IDE, apply pops up, so I can just fill that out. If not, pause the video and type it out. And so for this, if I wanna change the speed on my player object, well, I have this player controller script that has a move speed variable, and maybe this could be more generic, like character controller or something like that. And so we could say target.getComponent of type player controller, and then we get the move speed and we plus equals amount, just like our health, but now with a different script and a different variable, and that's it. And you could do other things too, like let's say we wanted to make our character turn yellow. So I could say target.getComponent of type sprite renderer and set the color equal to color.yellow. Right, so just for fun, I'll change the color of my character to yellow here. Just to show that you can be doing a couple different things in these apply methods. They can really get as sophisticated as you want them to be. But that's it, this is just the script. In one variable, one method, and two lines of code, it could even just be one line of code, we have a brand new power up made in our game. This is very, very quick. And again, so now this script is only worried about applying a speed buff, or debuff, depending on the amount you put in. You can now create this asset in the power ups drop down. we have speed buff, we could call this minor speed buff, or whatever you wanna name it. Maybe we wanna increase our speed by one, and then I could just duplicate this and call it major speed buff. And maybe we wanna increase the amount by like five or something. And then just like before, we have these health power ups, but I could just like rename them to power up. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to do this, but just to show you guys. So in this red one, I'll put a minor speed buff because this power up script is just taking a power up effect, not strictly a health buff or a speed buff. So you can pass any type of power up into this. So I put in a minor speed buff here, and for the other one, we'll put in a major speed buff. And so this is my default speed here. If I walk into the minor one, we turn yellow and go a little bit faster. And if I walk into this one, I go much faster. So just like that, we have a new power up already created in our game. And of course, just like health, you could make one and put in a negative value that actually slows you down. And so that's it, I, I'm gonna stop here. I think it illustrates the point. You could really make any type of power up you want with the system and using scriptable objects, it's such a powerful way of implementing it because of separation of concerns. It keeps things nice and clean between your colliders and you know the actual power up logic to apply it to your character. You can create these things on the fly and get a lot of versatility out of it. And so you might have emergent gameplay come up when you're developing these things. All in all, it's just a really good way to go about it. So I really recommend you give it a try. If you like it, please like the video. And before I go, I wanna show you this last power up I made. If you walk into this one, well then it's gonna tell you to subscribe. So you should do it. Thanks for watching.